Welcome to On the Spectrum. I'm your host, Terry Matthews, and this is the show where we inform you, entertain you, and educate you, yes, about all things autism. We like to call it prescription TV. Joining me today is Christina Turley, who is a music teacher at the Timothy School and is a mother of a child who's autistic, who unfortunately has had to deal with bullying. So we're gonna welcome today Christina Turley. It is so exciting for me to have you here because this is a subject we don't talk enough about. Thank you so much, Terry. It's so true, we don't talk about it and I'm grateful for the opportunity to share it with you. So let me talk a little bit about, first of all, how old is your son and when was he diagnosed with autism? So my son right now is currently 17 years old. Mm -hmm. He's in a typical high school in our school district. He was diagnosed with autism in second grade. In second grade. So mm -hmm. as a family, how, how did that change the dynamics of your family, if at all? Well, at the beginning, of course, you know, being an educator as someone who works in the fields of autism, you know, I always had those questions in my mind because, you know, you sit and you look at certain things or things he does and you're like, eh, all right, nah, maybe not. Or, <laughs> yeah, all right, yeah, nah, maybe not. And he was in Catholic school to start out with. And then later on, um, when we did see things, you know, educationally wise changing, him struggling a little bit with, you know, typical learning differences that children have, I unfortunately had to make the decision to put him in the public school system. And I mean, I knew at that time we were starting the um, wheels in motion to get him diagnosed. And I said, all right, let's get him into the school district. And I said, let them decide. So let me let me just pause there for a moment. I know we're talking about bullying, but I think this is important because you are an educator. And sometimes parents, we struggle when we're educated or we feel like we know or we've been around this before. Mm -hmm. um, and even parents who have not. So as an educator, was it hard for you to get a diagnosis for your son? I think it was because he did meet all his regular milestones. Okay. Walking, he was very athletic at that age. He was the better swimmer in the family, even though he was a younger child. So he did things at that age that we always thought to ourselves, wow, he's doing these things that our older son never did. And we used to say to ourselves, well, uh, yeah, well, maybe he's just a little quirky. Everybody's a little quirky, everybody's, you know, a little quirky. But then when I felt that there was something there and that he did need some assistance, it was hard, yes. So let me ask you this, when, you know, our kids, you know, as they transition, especially in public school and oftentimes in private schools, there are not a lot of supports for our kids on the spectrum. Right. When did you notice your son being bullied? Like what age was that? And, and how did that come about as a conversation even in the family? So unfortunately it started very young. And of course it was always a conversation. I feel like it, from the day he was diagnosed in second grade, it became a conversation. Mm -hmm. Because at that age, and that young age, the children don't necessarily know mm -hmm. that that's what it is. Yeah. There's no education for those younger children. No. There's nothing there for them to understand because all this looks so typical. Right. And they think to themselves, well, why are they acting like that? Right. You know, so that's a hard thing. Um, so yes, it did start young. In the elementary school level though, there was interactions, there were teachers, you know, they notice what goes on. They keep all their little ducklings in a row. Mm -hmm. So they know exactly what's going on in their classroom. They know who's doing what, who's doing what to who. Okay. You know, and they reach out then to the parents. Mm -hmm. It was when you get to the middle school, high school level that that all changes. So tell me on that middle school, high school level, when did it become an issue where as a parent you felt like you got to get involved, right? When you need to have the appropriate conversations and, and, and talk to the right people. And what actually happened to your son? Okay, so there were two incidents um, in the middle school. So in sixth grade, we still have those parents who are still getting, I mean, teachers who are still getting involved. Mm -hmm. Those teachers who see things going on a little differently and who say, who reach out to the parent and say, hey, was your son, you know, contacted on via this social media, you know, FaceTimed? And I'd be like, yeah, he's got some friends. And they're like, mm -mm, they're not his friends. They're screenshotting pictures of him. They are then opening up fake Instagram accounts with him on them. So wow. this happened, but again, 
those teachers were involved. So you know what's so interesting that you say that? I have a very, very good friend who has an autistic child and um, she did not, she recognized that her son was being actually bullied out of his food, you know, oh. and he didn't even realize he was being bullied no. out of his food. And our kids want friends, right? That so is so everybody interesting. Everybody wants to be socially acceptable, everybody autistic wants or to, not. <laughs> everybody wants to be accepted. Everybody wants to be part of something bigger. Absolutely. They all want somebody there in their corner. That is such a big point because when we had to sit down with our son and say to him, you can't answer these phone calls. We then got the retaliation from our son. So you it were was the bad a great guy. feel. We were the bad guy, but it was a great feeling when your son's looking at you and he said, "Oh no, these people are my friends." And you think to yourself, "Is this the typicalness that I wanted?" Oh my god! And gosh, it really what a good point. right. Is this what I wanted? I wanted him to say these things to me, but really, no, no, they're not. Not in friends. this. Not in this right. situation. For not sure. in that instance. They're not your friends. So, as a parent that has had to go through bullying with your child being bullied, what do you actually recommend for parents? I mean, are were there signs that you saw? How involved were you? Because Jaden's in middle school now, right? right? And this whole independence thing is killing me. For those of you who know Jaden's story, he was nonverbal. He's now verbal. Now he's in middle school. He wants to be socially accepted. He doesn't right. want to walk down the street with his big sister. He doesn't want to sit in the same no, bus no, row no, as his sister. It. As the as the sister or the other brother didn't want to do it with my son. So I mean, it's kind of like that. They go through that, but I think the challenge is is then how do you identify when your child is being bullied? Because I even now, like I'll ask Jaden, "How was your day?" And I try my best just to let him communicate the way he needs to communicate about his day. But then I'll hear something and I'm like, mm -mm, that's mm -hmm. not nice. And you want to kind of pick and pry at that a little bit more. And I think you have to. You have to pick and pry at that. Because what happened is then those teachers were involved. Mm -hmm. Okay, now fast forward to eighth grade. And I actually spoke with my son about this this morning because he knew I was coming here to chat with you about this. And I said, what do you consider bullying? And he said to me, Oh, but get, when people aren't nice to you, but you know, I, they, they do not nice things to you. And I said, and I explained the story I was going to share with you today. And he said, mm, I didn't think of that as bullying. Wow. And I thought that was really interesting. And I said, but it took a different level. So fast forward to eighth grade, he then is being teased one day mm -hmm. out on the track field with his track team water bottles being thrown at him. He's running around the field wow. trying to chase kids. Fine. Alex thinks nothing of it. He doesn't say anything. He thinks nothing of it because it's a typical situation where he's being teased. Mm -hmm. However, what brought it to the next level that would make my husband and possibly other people think that it was a bullying incident was he was being videotaped at the time. The video, the video that was taken on someone's cell phone was then sent through Snapchat to the entire eighth grade class. Showing him having water bottles thrown at him. And, and chasing, running. going a little crazy after the people. And, so and how did that make you laughing. feel as a parent? I mean, well, I have goosebumps because, listen, I'm, you know, right. I'm from a different time or era. Right. I'm trying to take these earrings right. off. Like, Here comes you Mama know. Bear. Okay. Here comes Mama, Mama Bear. Mama like, Bear, Lioness, Giant, right whatever you want to call well, me. Well, we never knew about it. And even to this day, I think when we spoke with him this morning and chatting about things and talking about what would you do if you bullied somebody? And he said, well, I wouldn't do that. I'm not that kind of guy. And I'm like, yeah, I know that. I said, and then when we explained more of the story, I said, well, when they called us, it was because this happened. The only reason we found out about it was because one child, one child went to the guidance counselor and said, I got this on my cell phone and I don't feel comfortable with it. Wow. So, so we would have never known about it. Never known. Because when my son was brought in and questioned about it, he said, Oh, no, 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 oh, that was okay, that was not, I don't think he ever realized, he was even this morning, mm -hmm. I don't think he ever realized it. He said, no, 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 you can't tell my parents, that happens all the time, I don't want them to worry about me. 
So let me say this, especially for our viewers out there, this is the challenge, right? Like I, I've had these situations where from a distance I've seen and I try not to jump in because mm -hmm. I don't want to embarrass Jaden. I, I want him to be able to, to have his own voice and stand up for himself about certain things. But sometimes they just don't recognize, hey, that's mean. You know what I mean? And right. so what would you say, like, were there any tools or skill sets that you use? Because bullying is one of those things that I just dread. You know, I am so concerned about him being made fun of mm -hmm. um, and him not even recognizing that somebody is making fun of him. And I guess you could say, well, he doesn't even recognize it. But then some things I've seen go too far with certain other kids. It does. So, okay, for example, that day, he didn't think there was anything wrong with that. They were teasing him. Like you said, the next step was what made it wrong, what made it mean. It was just, but again, a lot of our kids are not educated enough, are typically developing kids. They're not educated enough, and what happens is we've had other kids, parents who I know, who've then reached out, and they know that their child has done something to my child that wasn't so nice, and the other child would say to their parent, it really doesn't matter. They said we've apologized, but he doesn't understand that's what we're doing to him. So let me say this, just so for our audience out there, um, before we wrap this up, I would like for them to know you're an educator, yes. right? So you've been in education, you've been around individuals that are on the spectrum. What recommendation would you have? I mean, they don't want my recommendation because again, these are uh, everything. You know, I, I, I mean, I want to know from, from your perspective as a parent, what things would you challenge parents to pay attention to, especially at that eighth grade level, at that high school level, to make sure that they, they're, they're not, you know, sometimes we, they say, oh, we're overthinking it or we're overly concerned, but mm -hmm. it, and especially when you call the schools, because sometimes not all schools listen. No, Sometimes they, they think you're just being an exaggerative parent and just over concerned. Mm -hmm. So what do you recommend for parents? What's a solution for a parent if they are concerned about their child being bullied. bullied. I mean, you have to keep the open lines of communication. Mm -hmm. I think that's the most important thing with the school. If you can't get where you have to go with the school in and of itself, then you have to work as a community. I mean, as far as I was concerned, I used my, my story and what I was to help other parents to then turn around and say, look, this is what you can do. This is what you can do to help your child. You know, let them know that, yes, okay, they can be a little, you know, there are certain situations where, yeah, uh, maybe I would make fun of a friend or a friend would make fun of me about something, and our kids would see that and think, well, that's not bullying, right. but it's not. But then with the inception of social media and everything that comes along, that they have to keep those open lines of communication and say to our, our educators, look, this just isn't right. And you have to, you know, educate the other children too, those typically developing kids, to know that our children do have feelings too. Well, Christina, thank you so much for sharing that story, even about your son. And I think, again, this is something that we're going to have ongoing on the show where we're talking about bullying. What does it really look like? Bullying on social media. We're dealing with a whole other platform when right. we talk about that. Right, it's a whole that. different, it it's changes a whole everything. World, changes the game. But mm -hmm. thank you so much for sharing your story and being here with us today. Thank and you I'm so hoping, much. you know, that people understand even people who don't have autistic children, that bullying just isn't right, right? But more importantly, that we're educating that we all have different learning differences and abilities and talents and skills, and that it's never okay to take advantage of someone else. Yes, it's so true. Everybody has something to, to give. Everybody has something to give. We hope during this section of Let's Talk, you had an opportunity to get some great information about bullying. For more information like this, please log on to our YouTube channel at youtube.com backslash on the spectrum TM or our website at www.onthespectrum.tv. That's all the time we have. See you next time on the spectrum.